This is the Evil Never Dies podcast with Brett and Carl. This podcast may contain adult themes, violence and strong language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back to the Evil Never Dies podcast, episode 297. What's going on? Nothing. <laughs> Tired. I know, me too. I hate November. I do too. November sucks. Yeah, and I couldn't find my remote control for a light I needed, so that really messed me up. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Yeah. So the haunt went pretty good. It was it was pretty good, yeah. I would have liked to have had some more, more people than we did, but well, that's thanks to somebody wanting to run it for two nights. I'm telling you, it got broke up to where, yeah, yeah. I'm putting think... that one strictly on the person who wants to run it <laughs> two nights and possibly two weekends. Uh, we probably would have been better off doing a weekend, one night, one weekend, and one night the next. No, weekend. we're not going to do that. You try to get all these people to show up for that. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll just do one night next year. Yeah, Halloween. You think? Yeah, I know. I don't think we can get any actors though. I don't think the grave digger wants to work on Halloween. I the really, problem. I, I really don't. <laughs> I guess we'll run it without you then. Oh shit! We'll run it without you. <laughs> oh, how about one day on the weekend and then Halloween? Halloween is on a Friday. Yeah, I know. That is a weekend. Like the Saturday before, and I am not doing it in a week before. How are we supposed to now? You know how much trouble we have getting this thing done? I know. You always want to do these multiple weekends and stuff. and I know. It's always last minute stuff we're doing last minute, too. Well, it's just not that. It's like, you know, it didn't rain this year. Otherwise, we'd have really been in trouble. Yeah, I know. It's raining this weekend, though. Exactly. I'm glad it waited. Well, it rained like a son of a bitch halloween morning and then it ended up being a very nice day outside so yeah but think if we were doing the haunt on halloween night we would have had all that rain and messed everything up and we'd have been out there all day so that's true the weather is just too unpredictable in texas in october to plan anything outside of any kind of consequence for more than one or two nights exactly exactly but i'm not the one that tries <laughs> I've been dealing with this for a long time. Uh, well, when you had years before, you only open on Halloween night. Um, there's one weekend Halloween was on a Sunday and we opened Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That was the most I ever opened. And the Friday, hardly anybody showed up. It was the year the Rangers were playing the St. Louis Cardinals in the world series. And we kept going inside and watching baseball and somebody would say, oh, there's people. And we'd run out there. It, it was very, very, very bad. Huh. That's the night I got so drunk. I that was about as drunk as I'd ever been. I think. Oh yeah, that's. It funny. wasn't a fun weekend at all. Gotcha, gotcha. And but, I mean, yeah. this thing got promoted a lot, and again, it broke into the two nights, and I think that's why the attendance was a little lacking because people came on Friday, then they came on Saturday. If it only been one night, I think that'd have been more. Uh, tended to show up just for the one event it would have been a lot busier because i promoted the shit out of this thing this year yeah i know we both did uh, but 
Well, we'll oh, see. Well, it is what it brain. is. But there's video online and people. I, it's been a pretty viewed video to see what it looked like. That was with me narrating. We had a second video that somebody took, but she moved the camera like different ways, and it kind of messed the video up. Yeah, I've been I've been looking at that. I think it's too up and down to even. Maybe just throw it up there anyway. Yeah. As is, don't edit it or nothing. She went really slow through the whole thing. It's, it's yeah. It's like it shows a lot minutes. of the acting and stuff. So yeah, it's like twenty minutes long. So I'll just throw it up there. Maybe. Maybe you won't. Know, notice, maybe you won't notice it as much in. 4K. Probably wouldn't. Um. Yeah, I I think we ought to go ahead and put it out there just to just so we can see it. But if you haven't seen the other one, it's up on the YouTube. The other one's so. terrible because my narration is awful. I was tired by the time I did it and was saying things wrong. I called Frankenstein Dracula. <laughs> I was exhausted. This haunt really kicked my ass this year more yeah, than yeah. usual. And I don't really know. I guess it's because I didn't start working on it until a week and a half before it started. <laughs> but that's really what needs to happen. But everything worked good. All the props ended up working except for the witch, but. And that damn tall Pennywise sort of sucked. Yeah. It doesn't raise up anymore. No, we'll have to either try fixing him or put him to the street. People kept knocking into that Frankenstein's arm. So I've got him inside now and I got his arm down and put up one of those pool noodles where it looks like it's still there and it's just kind of hanging might do that next year. I don't know. Cause people were running into him a lot. Oh yeah. That's about all I got to say for the haunt. I'm done with it all. I'm done with Halloween for now. Yeah. It's... I'm tired. Cause I've been to every Halloween store in Fort Worth the last two days. And all I bought was Sammy stuff. That's it. Sammy. And the two things you bought me. Yeah. Lots of Sammy stuff. Yeah, I what did I get? I got your stuff, and I oh, I got a, got some lights that I didn't. And I'm gonna put in the studio here around the back ceiling there. Oh, so. that's what I I finally have me a light set, and I couldn't find my remote control. That's why it took me a minute to get online because I couldn't find my remote control or my iPad to get a hold of. You so I had to message you on the Mac here. Now, yeah. when I'm not looking for that, it'll show up, of course exactly that's the way it always works man but well, we got a movie for tonight i don't know how excited i am about it because it's more of a comedy than a horror movie but somebody requested it and we talked about doing it so we're gonna do it um yeah i don't know if i'm really excited about it or not we'll see all right and what is that movie carl it is mel brooks film young frankenstein I like Mel Brooks and I like young Frankenstein, but I don't know how it translates to our show very well. We haven't really done anything like this before. Well, I mean, we've done some funny horror movies, but this is actually a comedy. Yeah. So, and I'm not in a very comedic mood tonight, so I don't know. <laughs> not really. It's I watched a... it. Watch the, the um, special features too. They didn't really say it was mostly Mel Brooks talking. Oh yeah. Is that on the, is that the DVD or this is the Blu-ray. Oh, you got the Blu-ray. Got the Blu-ray. This thing is apparently out of print. It's nowhere on streaming. I don't know what the deal with this is. The rumors are because they use some of the actual props from the original Frankenstein, the universal has sort of like blocked this movie, which sounds like garbage to me, but do know Fox sold 20th century to Disney. And now this is the possession of Disney that could have something to do with the streaming, but I believe it's been off of streaming for longer than that. I don't really know exactly when, but I was looking for it a few years ago and couldn't find it. So I don't know why, but yeah, you're not going to find this movie anywhere. Really? It's where'd not you, available. Where'd you find it? Movie trading company. I did. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. Was that the only copy they had? The only one. Huh? Lucky you found it then. Yeah, like I said, 
a lot of the internet rumors is that Universal's got it tied up, which I don't believe, but I don't know any other explanation as to why it's missing. Um, other Mel Brooks films are out there, so yeah. Blazing Saddles. I think he was making that when he when they started talking about doing this. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into this thing and see how All it goes. Right. Young Frankenstein, directed by Mel Brooks, written by Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks, based on the 1818 novel by Mary Shelley. Well, I say bullshit on that. It was based on the actual movie itself. Yeah, yeah. I guess they throw that in there because the I original guess, yeah. was based on it, you know, so. Yeah, but they kept saying that it's based on the, I'm like, no, it's not. It's based on the movie completely. All right. Produced by Michael Gruskoff. Cinematography by Gerald Hirschfield. Edited by John C. Howard. <laughs> Music by John Morris. And it was basically like the same score as like the original Frankenstein. If you ask me pretty much. Yeah. Like a modernized version of it, I guess. Production companies are Griskoff venture films, crossbow productions, Inc. And Jewel limited distributed by 20th century Fox released on December 15th, 1974 has a running time of 105 minutes. Country of origin, United States, English language budget was $2.78 million. And it brought in 86.2 million at the box office. And this thing is critically acclaimed as one of the best comedies ever made actually by yep. a lot of the critics. Yep. It's well, actually in the national archives is a significant film or whatever they call those things. Yeah. I think most of them that take, keep track of that got it like in the top 50 out of, you know, whatever. And it is, it definitely is as far as the comedy goes and parts of the movie are pretty serious. Now I thought Gene Wilder played a pretty serious role, but it gets very comedic toward the end. And I start to lose a little bit of interest far as it being anything that we're covering. So we'll see how it goes. All right, Carl, why don't you go over the plot then? Well, um, Gene Wilder's character is, um, I forget his first name, but he's the grandson of Victor Fr uh, Frankenstein, but he wants to be known as Frankenstein because he's embarrassed by his grandfather and I guess his father's experiments in creating a monster. So what we're saying is this is, According to Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder, this is actually, they considered a sequel to Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, uh, Son of Frankenstein, and Ghost of Frankenstein. So technically, it's a sequel to those. So okay. he's an embarrassed grandson who is a scientist and for some damn reason decides to go to Transylvania and visit the, the family castle. Runs across a guy named Igor who calls himself Igor. <laughs> so we have Frankenstein and Igor and their assistant and off they go to Castle Frankenstein and they will eventually reassemble a version of the monster and that's your plot right there all right might as well go over the cast here it's a big cast. Big cast. I'm not going to go over all the villagers and shit, though. No, don't do that. There's still a bunch, even without them. So, uh, first off, we got Gene Weil as Dr. Frederick Fra Frankenstein. Uh, Peter Boyle as the monster, and he did a great job as the monster, man. He did. Uh, Marty Fellman as Igor. 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 And he was probably the best part of the movie besides Gene Wilder himself. Yeah. Yeah. Next off, we got Cloris Leachman as Frau Blucher. Uh, she's like the housekeeper of the Frankenstein and estate. Scream when her name is said, which is typical Mel Brooks. Uh, next off, we got Terry Gar as Inga, the young woman who becomes. Frederick Frankenstein's assistant. And we mm -hmm. just lost her like five days ago. 
Yep. So we didn't curse her. We pre we post coast <laughs> cursed her, I guess. I guess, yeah. I guess. <laughs> oh shit. Next we got Kenneth Mars as Inspector Kemp. Madeline Kahn as Elizabeth. Richard Hayden as Herr G Herr Gerhardt Falkstein. Richard Roth as Inspector Kemp's aide. Monty Landis as Rusty Blitz, one of the grave diggers. Gene Hackman as Harold the Blind Man. Yeah, and Gene Hackman has to be in this, so they found him a role. Yep. He actually wasn't credited when the movie first came out. No, it was supposed to be a cameo because Gene Hackman wasn't really known for being in any comedic movies. And the other Gene, I guess they were buddies. He's like, yeah, I'll fit you in it. So they wrote him in it. And Mel Brooks had cameos as the werewolf, the cat hit by Dant, and Victor Frankenstein's voice. Now, he wasn't in the actual movie because... Gene Wilder said, if you're in it, I'm not going to do it because you're always in your movies and you break the, what is it? The, the third window, whatever they call it. Yeah. So Gene, uh, Gene Wilder did not want him actually appearing in it. So he did not. Next up, we got Liam Dunn as Mr. Hilltop, Danny Goldman as medical student, Oscar Beregi as the sadistic jailer. Author Malay as the village elder. A uh, bunch of villagers. Yeah, we don't care about them. And that's about it for the cat. That's cast. about it. I don't know why they listed all them villagers. I get know. their IMDb credit, I guess. <laughs> was, was there even IMDb back then? Not in 1974, no. Uh, I didn't think so. There might have been MySpace, but that's it. Is there any? Is, is it just your basic Blu-ray for that, or? Yeah, it's got some special features. Like I said, it's got a interview with um Mel Brooks. Um, Gene Wilder did not appear on it because he sort of retired from Hollywood years ago prior to his passing, and nobody saw him again. Yeah. Floris Leachman was in it and um Terry Gar was on it and uh, they talk about uh Marty Feldman a lot, you know how yeah the dude was he was just a uh Buster Keaton, you know comic genius comedy guy, sure. yeah. He goes all the way back to that and um there's a commentary by M uh, Mel Brooks which I haven't watched. Um pretty good little um selection of extras. I mean this is back from the 20th century fox days and they used to put out some good blu-rays unfortunately now the 20th century library is in the hands of disney and they probably won't ever release crap again sad but i'm glad i got this thing because yeah i don't think you'll ever see a 4k release or any other kind of release for it at this stage good yeah. blu-ray if you can find it maybe pick it up well it came out in 2014 it is did it did blu-ray so yeah but it, it looks good. Um, sound is good. Everything about it's good. So, yeah, it's got a real cool um menu, which I've actually still got playing on the TV right now. It's the Monster Lab and some books and stuff up there. So it's a real good animated, um, uh, whatever you call it. I can't even talk. Control panel thing. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Uh, it had a couple of nominations for some awards. It was uh, nominated for the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay, Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder, but it didn't win, of course. Uh, Academy Award for Best Sound for Richard Portman and Gene Cantonessa. So a couple nominations for Academy Award. That's awesome. For a horror comedy movie. It's a comedy horror, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's true. All right. I guess we can go into some trivia here then. When Mel Brooks was preparing for this film, he discovered that Ken, we talked a little bit about this, Ken Strickfaden 
who had made the elaborate electrical machinery for the original Frankenstein from 1931 and all of its sequels was still alive and living in Los Angeles. So he visited him and found that he'd stored all the equipment in his garage. Brooks made a deal to rent the equipment out and gave Strickland the screen credit. He didn't receive for all of the other original films. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Gene Wilder leans in to kiss Madeline Kahn goodnight in her bedroom. Her last second quip is no tongues was ad lib by Madeline Kahn. There was a lot of ad lib in this movie, according yeah, to was. Mel Brooks, especially yeah. from Gene Wilder. You know, Gene Wilder sort of played this as a straight character. I don't really think he was even trying to be funny. A little bit. There was some parts he was. Yeah, but Gene Wilder even said, told Mel Brooks, he says, I don't know why people think I'm funny. I don't think I'm funny. And he said, well, that's why you're funny, dude. So. <laughs> All right. Gene Hackman ad-libbed the blind man's parting line. I was going to make espresso. Scene immediately fades to black because the crew erupted into fits of laughter. Hackman was unable to repeat the line without laughing at the with the rest of the crew. So the first take was used. Like I said, he was uncredited when the was originally released in theaters, the cast, especially Mel Brooks had so much fun and were so upset when principal photography was almost completed that Mel Brooks added scenes to continue shooting. That's sort of cool that you're having that good of a time on set. Yeah. They said there's something else was filming and, Fox studios like next to him. And it certainly was, it was more of a somber affair than this movie. The shifting hump on Igor's back was ablid gag. Also Marty Feldman had been, um, shifting the hump back and forth for several days. By the time cast members finally noticed it, and then it was added to the script. That is funny though. He does such a good job in this movie. Definitely. Like we already talked about this, Gene Hackman and Gene Wilder telling him about the job. Gene Wilder states that has stated that this is his favorite movie of all time that he's made. That's impressive. Cloris Leachman improvised the dialogue in which Frau Blucher warm milk and Ovaltine to Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> Everybody was just hilarious in this. That movie. line is probably lost in time. Cause I'm sure most people don't know what the hell Ovaltine is now. I know uh, you can still buy Ovaltine. Well, it's not popular like it once no, was. No. I mean, that was before our time really when it was the go-to drink. <laughs> Supposedly the scene which required the most takes to be filmed was the one which Igor bites Elizabeth's animal wrap. The reason was that each time he did it, he was, he, he was left with a piece of fur in his mouth, which caused the other actors and actresses to laugh hysterically. Just, <laughs> oh shit. When they st started to film the putting on the writ scene, no one was sure what the creature would should say. <laughs> The first time out of the gate, however, Peter Boyle came up with a strangled version of pooning on Dereez. <laughs> oh shit. The way, I'll he, say, the way he screamed, he was like screaming it like, th this was probably the best betrayal of the Frankenstein monster talking. And it made mo more sense. You know, was it Bride of Frankenstein? He starts talking to me and you were like, what the fuck? Yep, yep. Yeah, this time it actually made sense. They they transferred brains. <laughs> yeah. Uh the idea of Frederick's dart hitting a cat was ad libbed on set. When Gene Waller threw his dart off camera, director Mill Brooks quickly screamed like a cat to create the illusion. <laughs> Uh, in 1974, Aerosmith took a break from a long night of recording to see this film. Steven Tyler wrote the band's hit Walk This Way the morning after seeing the movie, inspired by Marty Feldman's first scene, the Walk This Way that's, scene. 
that's a true story right there, dude. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to mention it. Yeah. Inspired Walk This Way, the damn movie did. And actually, that scene was planned to be cut from the final version of the film, but it gained so much popularity that he kept it in. Yeah, he should have kept it in. It was a good scene. And included variations of it are in History of the World Part 1 and Robin Hood Men in Tights. I'm sure we'll never cover another Mel Brooks movie, so it's good to mention a few of those. <laughs> yeah, really. Gene Wilder, Gene Wilder constantly cracked up during takes. According to Cloris Leachman, he killed every take with his laughter and nothing was done about it. Shots would frequently have to be repeated as many as 15 times before Wilder could finally summon a straight face. Well, that's pretty good because you said that you thought that he was trying to play such a serious scene in this. He seemed to, yeah. So. Terry Gar originally auditioned for the role of Elizabeth, the fiance, while Madeline Kahn was the front runner for Inga. But Kahn ultimately decided she'd rather play Elizabeth, leaving Mel Brooks with the task of recasting the Inga role. He called Gar in and told her that if she could come back the next day with a German accent, he'd like her for the part. She looked at Mel and said, well, yes, I could. I could do the German accent tomorrow. <laughs> I and could come back. This, I could come back this afternoon if you want. <laughs> and he gave her the gig. So over the phone. That was her first big movie, I believe. Yeah. Mel Brooks initially thought that the walk this way gag was too corny and wanted it cut from the film. And, uh, but he didn't because it's probably the, one of the, most known gags and comedy history for sure. Probably the, the best there's all kind every one of these lines in this movie are memorable, but the whole, um, the brain is the best part. You know, where he, um, Igor drops the brain and, Oh yeah. Yeah. He gets the Abbey normal brain. Yeah. I, I've been, I've used that on every Frankenstein movie we've done. Abby Normal, yeah, yep. abnormal brain. There was a villain. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, because uh, I didn't mention the, all the villagers. There's a villager named Clement von Frankenstein, who is an actual descendant of the noble house of Frankenstein. The namesake for the tutorial character in Mary Shelley's original novel. So, huh. That's sort of cool. Sort of cool. Oh, let's see here. The skulls that Freddie and Inga find underneath the castle were real skulls, except for the one that was six months dead, which had to be handcrafted. Well, that's creepy. We've had a lot of real skulls used in movies we've covered, it seems like. Well, they're cheaper than plastic ones, I guess. Good to know. Maybe we should just buy start buying real ones. I... <laughs> oh, Mel Brooks considered this the best film he ever directed, but rates it number three amongst the funniest after Blazing Saddles and The Producers. Brooke confirmed these views in interviews with celebrating his 90th birthday in 2016. I think he died right after that too. I didn't think he? You're right. Yeah. Like the next year. Yeah. Just like in Frankenstein, greenish face makeup was used on the monster to make the, his features more prominent in the black and white film. Now do note, they said that they actually filmed this in actual black and white. I yeah, guess yeah. a lot of the films from the seventies, when they did the black and white, they would film them in color, turn them black and white. This was actually filmed like it would have been in the 1930s. So made it look really good. Made it look like it really should have been a sequel to some of these original universal monster movies. Great cinematography. In other words. Oh yes. And this hope for sure. 
All right, the experiment the medical student mentions where Darwin preserved a worm and fluid until it came to life is mentioned in Mary Shelley's foreword to the novel. The Darwin in question was Erasmus Darwin, grandfather of the famous Charles Darwin. Uh, Gene Wilder conceived the putting on the Ritz scene while Mel Brooks was resistant as to as to it as a mere conceit and felt it would distract from the fidelity to universe to the universal horror films and the rest of the film. I agree with Mel Brooks. Wilder recalls being close to rage and tears and argued for the scene before Brooks stopped him and said, it's in. <laughs> when Wilder asked why he'd changed his mind, Brooks said that since Wilder had fought for it, then it would be the right thing to do. But it was the only when he soon saw the musical number along with the howling audience that Brooks was finally confident about the sequence. I didn't think it would fit very well. Eh, they could have did without it for sure. Yeah. I think it sort of took away from the movie completely, honestly. The candles the actors are holding while exploring the castle at night were made of aluminum pipe with 100 watt projection bulbs concealed inside. A wire can a wire ran up each actor's sleeve and down the pant leg. So, in addition to remembering their lines, they had to remember to keep the wires and the bulb out of view. Cool. That's sort of cool. Got anything else? Yeah, Peter Boyle met his future wife, Lorraine Alderman Boyle, when she visited the set to write an article about the filming of Young Frankenstein for Rolling Stone magazine. That's sort of cool. There's not much. We've already talked about all this other stuff, so. Yeah, I, I'm. this is a movie I'm pretty versed on. I think I, I knew more about it than I do some of the horror movies, probably. Yeah, I've seen it a lot. Yeah been a while since yeah i know i think i probably had it on dvd at one time i, I know i it, did i think it was on streaming at one time because i remember watching it on stream i don't know what's somewhere. happened to it but if i'm not mistaken it disappeared prior to fox selling off the uh, 20th century I, I i don't know well how uh, long ago has that been it's been a while now but there's still uh 20th century fox content available all over the place and there's Mel Brooks movies, so there's something weird about this. Maybe and it is. Some, maybe it is something with the Universal stuff. Who knows? You know, you talk about those copyrights running out here soon, so yeah, we'll see. Yep. I mean, Hulu is owned by Disney. You would think it might be there, but next year people are going to be making all kinds of Universal shit. Yeah. So what is it next September when it ends? I think that's what you said. You know, we got all the Winnie the Pooh stuff coming out. So, Winnie the Pooh stuff. Yeah, yeah Winnie yeah. the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and all. Oh, them are my fucking... chin itch, itches because I trim you... my chin beard and it itches now. <laughs> have you seen any of them stupid ass movies? No, I have no interest in that. Don't fucking do it, dude. They will never be reviewed on. Okay. This show. So. Well, that's about all we got. So I'm gonna let you start on this one. I love this movie. I'm giving it a five. <laughs> Straight up, huh? Straight fucking up, buddy. Now, is that it's, a comedy I, or I, is it a horror movie, though? That's where we got Dude, a... when I first seen this, when it first came out, it was a little scary, you know, for like a seven-year-old kid. I think I remember it being a little scary, too, as a kid, but goofy. And see, yeah. I'm not a comedy guy. You probably know that. The comedy I like is slapstick shit. You know, the Three Stooges. Yeah. Um, and this is Mel Brooks is very slapstick, yeah. you know, the airplane movies, uh, the naked gun movies. That's the stuff I like, you know, kind of dirtier, just slapstick comedy. And then this fits Shit you bill. can't make today stuff. Exactly. <laughs> you can't make today. Nope. And, um, so this has always held a special place. I mean, I probably did not, I, I knew it was a comedy as a kid, but i I'm going to tell you what, some of them Universal movies were so dumb that this looked serious compared to them, you know, the later ones. So everybody did a great job in this, man. Uh, yeah. I don't I, know how it fits our show as far as 
You know, I, I've been wanting to branch out and do other things, some more science fiction that has a little bit of scariness to it, maybe. So this was our first real venture into a comedy. And I'm glad we did it. Yeah, me too. As far as a comedy goes, I will also give this a five. Okay, cool. As far as a horror movie, no, it's not. But it's not really a horror movie. It's based upon the original Frankenstein movie. And parody of it. A parody. And for that, this is not a horror movie, I don't think, in any way. It's it's a comedy. It's a parody. And for that, it's it's done perfectly. Like I said, I thought the end of it gets a little stupidly stupid, but yeah. you know, what can you do? The end's kind of spooky because Gene Wilder takes a t turn for the dark there at the end, maybe. We don't know. There never was a young Frankenstein, too. No. So Now, this movie's um, comedic genius. Mel Brooks was one of the best ever. Gene Wilder was the most underrated actor in Hollywood, in my opinion, period. I don't think that guy ever got the um, credit he should have. I've no. always said that. And no. this might, I don't know. Willy Wonka might have been the best. This is definitely in the top three of his performances. Willy Wonka was damn good. He he was really, really a scary character in Willy yeah. Wonka. Yeah. But still had that just nuts yeah <laughs> like i said this guy never got the credit yep. he deserved i know and you know as he got older he sort of bow bowed out of hollywood gracefully well we after gilda died and stuff he i think know, so i think he just sort of gave up he did some stuff that you know there in the up until like the late 80s i think in the early 90s and that yeah. was it for him you know yeah he, he was in good health he just sort of <clears throat> he did a lot of charity work and stuff he, and he was so broken when she died too, dude, that, that they were made for each other. They were, you know, yeah. Well, we have a guest who watched young Frankenstein with me. Oh yeah. What's she rate it? Scarlett. What did you think of the movie? A one, a one. <laughs> he thought it was another Frankenstein movie. Wait, he thought the what, Frankenstein wait was till you're our age. You'll like it. <laughs> he thought it was a real Frankenstein until so she said, this Frankenstein's silly, but he, what did he say? He didn't kill a, ba a little kid. No, no. That was, she liked that because this one didn't kill the little girl. <laughs> but she watched the whole thing. I think she liked it better than a one. She didn't understand the comedy of it. So if you're her age, you might not find this very adventurous. Well, I probably seen it when I was about her age first time. So maybe younger. These kids was... don't understand comedy in this day and age. No. All they watch is YouTube and Netflix. Yeah. Right, Scarlet. That's rotten their brains. Yeah, your brains are rotten. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching and listening. That's all we got for uh, Young Frankenstein. So. Uh, check us all out on the social medias and uh, hit that like and subscribe on the YouTube and turn on them notifications. Yes, because we've done like two shows and nobody watched them. So you, so you know when we're coming on. So and, uh, always on the podcast links. We always post them too. Check that. Check us out there if you don't want to watch our dumb asses. So shout out to todd for making us both necklaces yeah i got my little thing here my little baby michael yes i noticed that earlier and i didn't say anything yeah I, I about forgot about my baby michael thanks todd i appreciate that buddy i think we both you get you got a little casket thing didn't you i did yep okay all right well that's enough of that Stay okay we're gonna everybody. send scarlet back to her room now go away Go to your room. Bye, Steve. She's evil. gone. It's coming from the deep, dark recesses of the mind of Mel Brooks. I love him. Young Frankenstein. Sky means business. Ah! Young Frankenstein. Oh dear, nothing left. What shall we throw in now? 
starring Gene Wilder as Dr. Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. But what about your grandfather's work, sir? My grandfather's work was doo-doo! Peter Boyle as the monster. Wow! <laughs> Marty Feldman as Igor. My grandfather used to work for your grandfather. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Loris Leachman as Frau Blucher. You played that music in the middle of the night? Yes! To get us into the laboratory? Yes! And it was you who left my grandfather's book out for me to find? Yes! So that I would? Yes! Then you and Victor were? Say it! He was my boyfriend! <laughs> Kerry Gar as Inga. Would you like to have a roll in the hay? Kenneth Mars as the inspector. And Madeline Kahn as Elizabeth. Where am I? <sighs> Calm down. What do you want to do to me? I'm not afraid of you. <sighs> Listen, I, I'm, I have to be back by 11.30. I'm expecting a very important call. Kill the monster! Storm the castle! And spread lights and Mel Brooks, Young Frankenstein. Yes, I think we could all use a good laugh. But don't see it alone. Don't miss Young Frankenstein. Personally directed by Mel Blazing Saddles Brooks. In black and white. No offense.